From the north to the south From the east to the west Shonse Femi Dundu Once if you have been a Zambia It's time we stood together One Zambia, one nation Vamok to achieve your world with coronavirus From the north to the south From the east to the west Shonse Femi Dundu Once if you have been a Zambia It's time we stood together One Zambia, one nation Vamok to achieve your world with coronavirus As we adapt to the new normal, together we can clear in the solo. The farmers and the traders must have sell it like a booty. Tien to some kumanja was a quila kumenso. Maka maka mueva di mi mwadi ba essential. Mule shaziko. This message has been powered by the Center for Trade Policy and Development, CTPD, with support from the Open Society Initiative in Southern Africa, OSISA, OSISA. Now, some new research reports that a staggering sum of over two billion U.S. dollars a year is lost by people of Zambia to tax avoidance and tax evasion by multinationals. Overly, generous tax incentives provided to companies by the Zambian government have also played a role. Joining me to discuss tonight's topic closing loopholes on tax evasion and avoidance is Chileshe G. Mange. My name is Said Nkonjara and I'll be with you this evening. You do get a chance to call in and add your voice to the conversation. The number is 0764-250055. It will be appearing on your screen uh, for you to be able to call in. Joining us uh, from somewhere but within the country of Zambia is uh, Chileshe Chileshe, good evening. Welcome to the unscripted edition of um, tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. 
All right. It's so good to be joined by you this uh, evening. And allow me to mention that this program is brought to you by the Center for Trade and Policy Development uh, with support from Tax Justice Network Africa. And we get to discuss the topic that I just did mention a few uh, you know, seconds ago. Chilashe, an interesting topic. We're talking tax tonight. Yes, we are. Um, as you rightly mentioned, um, there are estimates that we lose about two billion um, US dollars a year due to tax evasion and tax avoidance. The continental figure is somewhere around 50 billion US dollars, according to the Organization for Economic Development, OECD. Um, whereas some organizations like the United Nations for Economic um, Commission for Africa puts that figure at closer to 100 um, 100 billion. I'm not sure which one we want to go with, but as a country that relies heavily on um, extraction, meaning mining in particular, um, as its economic mainstay, Zambia is particularly vulnerable to this, shall I say, vice. Now, um, some will be watching this conversation and want to, you know, have the information. Uh, what do we mean when you say tax um, evasion and avoidance? So tax evasion is the illegal means of trying to um, sort of get away from paying taxes. So this would be things like not declaring profits, for instance, that's, that's illegal, or um, transfer mispricing. These are things that are specifically prohibited under law. So that's tax evasion, where you actually commit an offense. Tax avoidance is the tricky one, because tax avoidance, strictly speaking, is not illegal. Tax avoidance is basically using the legal mechanisms that are in place to then avoid paying taxes. So examples would be, for instance, um, as we see the many, many multinational corporations do, they will set up um, residence in tax havens and take advantage, for instance, of double taxation agreements, uh, or they will move money around um, in different in legal ways, but in so doing then they are paying less tax than they should. All right, now, um, when we look at tonight's uh, topic, which is closing loopholes, on tax of avoid, avoidance, tax evasion and avoidance, um, what is uh, the law done? Is this even attainable? Um, it's it's a long road um, for for very many for very many reasons. Um, can you hear me? A bit of some uh, feedback, but I can get you now. Right. So it's not unattainable, um, it's, but it's, a, it's definitely a long road. So in an African context, even here in Zambia, um, one of the challenges that we have is um, information flows. So one of the things, one of the ways or, or one of the, the hallmarks for an effective tax system or a government's capacity to enforce a tax system is information. And this information particularly refers to information from other jurisdictions. So we have, we have to keep in mind that taxpayers can be multinational. So they may have presence in various jurisdictions, whereas your tax authorities, like, your, like our ZRA, are domestic. So what you have is a conflict between your domestic law and then preserving the rights of those multinational corporations. So what is required more than anything is what was known as exchange of information or EOIs. So you need to have an effective system for exchanging information between various jurisdictions, particularly the jurisdictions where the, you have an operational base, meaning your host countries and the countries, the home countries, so the countries of those um, multinationals where they are resident. Now challenges with this come in where you have countries that have um, very robust bank secrecy laws, meaning they aren't necessarily required by law to disclose information about their their, um, their clients or their residents. Um, a, a typical example of this is a country like Switzerland, which is, of course, very renowned for its bank secrecy laws. Um, another, another challenge, of course, looks at infrastructure deficits insofar as um, digitalization. So the world is a, glo is, the world is, is a global village, and what, that has been made possible through um, um, technology and digitalization. So um, African countries often have a difficult time, um, or rather tend to be far behind the developed nation insofar as closing this gap. We've heard the argument so many times that the technology is the new equalizer. And that is true in many instances. But here in Africa, we need to take more strides towards um, closing or breaching that technology gap. 
Um, another problem that we tend to have here is just a lack of legislation, which specifically speaks to um, information exchanges. So these are some challenges that we have in terms of um, enhancing our capacity to properly um, administer or enforce um, taxes as a country. I have to say, though, that um, the ZRA has done quite a bit in the last decade or so, insofar as for starters, investing quite um, substantially into uh, digitalization. So, for instance, we've seen that ZRA has pretty much now gone digital. Um, we have an e-platform for registering taxpayers. We have an e-platform for, for filing systems. This goes a long way towards um, ensuring compliance and making administration, obviously, um, much easier. We've also seen legislation in like 2018, for instance, we saw that the RA went as far as to um, enact uh, regulations to do with transfer pricing. This was very pivotal, very crucial, and especially when you look at um, how far we've come. For example, the Mopani case, which has, of course, been hailed worldwide as a landmark um, judgment. We can get into the details of that case later. So I think that we've made a lot of positive strides, but we do need to, um, of course, bridge the gap insofar as information exchange. You mentioned uh, quite a number of uh, items, and I'm, I'm happy that you have brought this, uh, you know, back home uh, to where we do see quite a number of, uh, you know, efforts that the Zambia Revenue Authority is uh, putting up uh, with regards, uh, you know, tax collection in, in this country. But there are, as, uh, you know, highlighted in several, uh, you know, reports, several methods, uh, you know, that are used to evade uh, tax, such as falsifying records, um, as well as, uh, you know, another method which is under reporting income. Now that you brought in the mines, this has been a topical issue for far too long in this country. Yes, it's true. So um, if you um, took the time to read the, the FIC trends report published last year, um, one of the conduits for um, losing revenue in the country is through tax evasion and ZRA um, properly highlighted that um, the main mechanism really is or the main culprits really are is the mining sector and this is something which is universal in all in almost all um, um, extractive extractive industries across the world um, that tends to be the trend. They tend to get away with a lot of um, tax evasion and tax avoidance. So one of the, way, the, the, the ways that the ZRA highlighted include um, repatriation of proceeds by mining companies to offshore jurisdictions. So like, as we were saying, where they're able to use these complex um, corporate structures to move funds from one, from one country to another without necessarily um, detecting any uh, legal implications. Also through false accounting techniques, um, non-declaration of exportation of resources. So we know one of the main issues I think we have, and my colleagues in extractives at CTPD will, will, will agree with me and will be very pleased to hear me say this. Um, we do have a situation in the country where the mining entities tend to have a monopoly of information with regard to um, reserves, mineral reserves, and just geological information. That in itself gives them um, an upper hand insofar as declaring exports and um, getting away with um, paying particular taxes. Also, an under-evaluation of precious um, stones and base metals. These are the ways that we have, or ZRA itself has cited, that the mining companies get away with um, paying taxes or paying the appropriate taxes. And this brings me now to the Mopani case, which as I say, has been hailed in Zambia as a landmark um, as a landmark case. So what happened there is Mopani Mines PLC, um, which has a shareholder in Switzerland, Glencore um, AIG. So Mopani was selling copper to its shareholder. And what was found was that the price at which it was selling copper to the shareholder was below the open market value, which is a classic example of transfer mispricing. And through an extensive audit, which took, which covered um, quite a number of charge years, ZRA picked up that Mapani had not been dealing at arm's length basis and had instead undersold copper to its, um, to its shareholder 
for specifically for avoiding um, or paying less of a tax liability. Um, the matter then went into court um, and spent quite a significant time in litigation. And then as at um, May of 2020, we finally have um, finally had a judgment by our Supreme Court. And in this case, um, ZRA was awarded um, 11.4 or 11.3 um, million US dollars in tax liabilities from by Mopani. So that's, that's, that's an example of um, the ways in which the mining sector gets away with um, paying the appropriate taxes. And again, it's, it's encouraging that the government has um, taken steps to curb this problem and we're encouraged even that we actually now have jurisprudence and um, um, precedence which supports um, the enforcement of the ZRA. You've mentioned quite a number of uh, loopholes uh, that do exist, but I want to find out if at all, uh, you know, we as a nation uh, are doing enough. Or you can even look at it from a continental perspective. If we are doing enough uh, to really curtail, uh, you know, this uh, particular vice, and if we are, um, what is it exactly that we have done? And if we are not, uh, what do we need to do then uh, to, you know, curtail this, to close down these loopholes that you're mentioning? As I said, it's a work in progress, but I think fundamentally is um, regional integration. And in the context of um, uh, EOIs that I mentioned earlier, exchange of information um, systems. So um, one, one example of this is the, um, what is known as the Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes, which is an organization um, through the OECD um, network. So it's, that particular organization has what they call a program called the Africa Initiative. The Africa Initiative um, was developed out of a need to curb illicit financial flows from the African continent. And we have 32 member countries that are participants, that are member states of this particular um, initiative. And what it has is a, um, a very robust work plan, an ambitious work plan to basically compel um, the rest of the world, so to speak, to provide information as and when it is requested by African countries. Remember that it's, it's a perennial issue that African countries tend to draw the short end of the stick at the negotiation table. And there are various reasons for this. Um, among the others, of course, being our own weak, in, or weak, weak institutions insofar as tax administration and just um, policy in general. So Zambia is not a member of this particular initiative. And such initiatives, I think, are a missed opportunity for us to participate in a global network that is aimed at um, ensuring that there's adequate information that is provided to us. Because as I said earlier, the, the hallmark or the defining instrument in determining whether or not a government has um, enforcement capacity is um, information. So I think these are opportunities that government should take advantage of, um, sign these necessary treaties, get involved, and then be able to take advantage. Also bearing in mind that this initiative, in particular the Africa Initiative, is one that is anchored on meeting developmental goals. We have to remember that in as long as money is leaving the country and the continent at large, it hinders our prospects of um, one, domestic resource mobilization, and two, being able to meet developmental goals, be it um, the AU 2063, be it the, the SDGs or our very own domestic vision 2030 and so forth. Um, illicit financial flows and tax evasion, which, is, which are examples thereof, um, hinder our abilities to meet specific developmental goals. So these are issues that should be seen as a developmental issue more than one of politics and money. Mm. Uh, you, you mentioned um, the monopoly of information by, you know, these mining companies in that they, uh, to a large extent, do not declare um, accurate information of how much uh, mineral reserves uh, they have. How do we sort out this particular problem? I think given the number of years um, we've been independent and so forth, I think that at this point we have to take some responsibility. I think the onus is on us as a country to invest more in whether it's a logical survey, um, invest more in um, improving our 
ecological department if need if, if need be. So I think that as long as we rely on the mining companies to provide us with this information, we'll always be kicking ourselves, um, literally kicking ourselves in the mouth. So we need to get to a place where as government, there has to be um, a deliberate um, move to try and invest more money into um, geological information, have a fully functional, properly equipped geological um, survey department, which is able to in itself go out there and determine what are the mineral reserves that we have, and in so doing, give us the capacity then to have um, the information that we need. Do erring institutions, um, you know, get penalized for this? I want to believe that, like you did say, this is an illegality. Evading uh, tax is, is an illegality. Is, is there any form of, uh, you know, penalty or penalties that uh, you can say have been done so far, or are there any convictions uh, even to, uh, that have been done to this effect? Well, I think the most the classic example would be the case I just cited, the Mopani, the Mopani case, where we saw that um, the Supreme Court ordered Mopani to pay its tax liabilities. Um, added to that were significant penalties as well. Um, and at, at some point, some of the penalties were, were waived or renegotiated um, with the mining entity, um, just to sort of like meet, meet, meet each other halfway, and so to speak. So there are specific penalties that are in place in the legislation. One example, of course, being um, uh, extended or, or extensive fines towards the corporation. Remember that mines can't necessarily be arrested, but they can. They do have certain other sanctions, like, for example, um, paying hefty fines for tax evasion. Allow me to, um, at this moment, allow our viewers to throw in those questions uh, to you, our viewers. You're watching the unscripted program, and tonight uh, we're featuring the Center for uh, Trade Policy Development, and uh, we're discussing closing loopholes on tax evasion and avoidance. Remember, this uh, program is brought to you with the support from Tax Justice Network Africa. So do call in. The number is 764 uh, 250055 and add your voice to this conversation. Let us know uh, what your thought is on this particular topic that we're discussing uh, this evening. If you'd want to, uh, you know, ask a question, do feel free uh, to ask that question as we discuss the Zambian, uh, you know, tax situation. Now, you did also allude to a number of other, you know, items in, in, in this particular uh, topic that we're looking at um, uh, tonight. Uh, but when you talk of um, falsifying of records, uh, is there a specific, uh, you know, approach that we need to take as, as a country, uh, you know, to sort of uh, get rid of, of, of this trend? So when we look at um, the way in which uh, the government or the ZRA um, is able to gather information on um, taxpayers. It usually involves costly, very costly audits. So, which is why I was saying that it's very important for us to um, invest more heavily in one, improving tax administration, be it through digital enhancement and so forth. So, um, if, for example, you have a more robust digital system, which enables you to properly track and trace um, taxpayers and track and trace their their records and their details. That makes things um, a lot easier. At the moment, of course, it is a very costly affair um, and you need manpower, you need human resources to get this sort of, to get this work out of the way. So the more digital we go, hopefully the better we, um, the better our administration becomes. Also, as I said, information is, is key. And as I mentioned, um, most of our um, tax evasion or tax avoidance. The corporates are in fact multinationals. So they may be operating here in Zambia, but they are resident in various countries. Um, it's also very encouraging, for instance, that um, we're yet to renew a double election agreement with Mauritius. These are all um, avenues or mechanisms that to some extent work for and against us. So again, information is very, very important. Um, it's encouraging that we have, apart from tax legislation, we also have um, uh, in the Companies Act, the official ownership requirements. These are requirements that impose on shareholders 
uh, or rather companies, a requirement to specifically state who the ultimate beneficiary are or is of the shareholder. That way you are sort of um, going over and above the corporate veil to understand who are the actual players that are involved in this um, in this company or these corporations. That then makes it easier for you to place liability. And also encouraging un under the FIC um, Act that or, or rather the current amendment that we have more stringent uh, measures put in place insofar as identifying the specific um, persons or people that are involved in, um, in, in financial transactions. And this includes your intermediaries. So these are all very positive steps. So one, um, we have the legislation in place, but the key is implementation thereof and also then um, supplementing that with um, integration with the rest of the region, the rest of the world, and so far as information exchange, and then of course um, where we can enhancing the digital um, infrastructure. I was, I was reading up on this uh, topic, and I came across uh, a, you know a, a part which said that there's also what can be uh, classified as illegally assigning income. Uh, can you tell us about this and why it is? Um, an illegality. Repeat the question, sorry? There's assigning of income uh, illegally. Uh, can, you, can you tell us just briefly about how this uh, plays into uh, tax evasion? So as you know, um, you are, we are taxed on your income. So you're taxed on what you earn. And there are various, um, the different mechanisms for, or, or different um, elements that constitute an income. So say for instance, um, rental, rent, rentals are an income. Your salary is, is an income. If you earn interest of say loans, that's an income. So these are all different things, different, different elements that constitute an income. So if you are assigning income elsewhere, it means that essentially you're not declaring what your income is. And that in itself is tax evasion. So, and of course you're taxed on profits that you earn. So, it becomes a problem when you're not adding, because that means that if you're assigning income, you're not properly um, accounting for the income that you earn, and therefore you are misleading the tax authorities and not paying what you should. That's why that becomes problematic. You of yours, 0764250055 is the number to call to get through to this uh, conversation. Uh, we are discussing closing the loopholes on tax evasion and avoidance you can call in that number zero seven six four two five zero zero five five it will be it is appearing uh, right at the bottom of your screen and we'll be able to engage uh, you know with you on this particular uh, conversation i'm joined in by um chileshiji mange uh, from uh, ctpd who's helping us you know discuss this particular topic that uh, you know is affecting a beautiful country and of course the continent as well as the globe in general. Now, what else are you able to uh, you know, share with us on this particular topic before I bring in uh, you know, our phone call? Um, so I think we've had a lot of emphasis today on mining companies and the main reason being, as I say, firstly, mining is, is our economic mainstay. Secondly, um, extractive industries are the biggest culprits in so far as um, avoiding and evading taxes. But it's important to know that they are not the only they are not the only culprits, and um, there are other industries that are also heavily involved in tax evasion. It's just that in a Zambian context, we know that um, and we have classic examples of the mining industry being culprits in this particular regard. Um, also, I think this is the perfect platform to say that. Um, it's also important for our government, for we as Zambians, to take note that whenever we have a conversation about mining tax, it usually arises when copper prices are high, like as is the case now. And that causes or makes us appear as though we, have, we are erratic and policies shifting left, right and center. I think it's important to have these conversations when, for example, prices of copper are not, are not low or are not high. But even if they are high, we need to have um, a tax regime that can withstand the test of time and not one that needs to constantly change towards the um, 
or rather which is not um, affected purely by the price of copper in, in a given fiscal year. I think that's that's something which we also need to to put in um, to put in place as a country. Hmm. Um, you initially you did highlight uh, that um, you know tax evasion uh, could be projected to be has been projected rather to be in excess of uh, two billion dollars uh, locally. Why do we have so huge amounts, or such huge amounts, uh, you know, being recorded? It's the classic um, examples that I've already cited. Um, firstly, um, repatriation of funds by um, your multinational corporations into other other jurisdictions, um, and this is made possible largely because one. It's, it's a monopoly of information. So a lot of the information that is required is held by the mining companies themselves or by the multinationals. And it's information that we not, not necessarily be privy to as the ZRA. It's a question of not having necessarily the, the, the capacity to enforce um, tax legislation or um, tax compliance. That's another issue. Um, so as long as the mining companies have monopoly of information, there will always be means or ways of um, evading taxes. We also have, for example, very lax foreign exchange um, controls, which makes it easier as well for countries to move money in and out of, in and out of the country. Um, in other jurisdictions, um, they have much stronger or much stricter foreign exchange control um, rules or legislation, which makes that process a little bit harder. So these are all examples of the of the of the reasons or weaknesses in our system, which enable the mining companies or multinationals at, in general, not just not just the mining companies, but enables um, most of our a lot of our investors to get away with um, tax tax evasion or tax avoidance. Also, keep in mind that um, we do have incentives within our legislation for investors, particularly those who have a a certificate from the ZDA, for instance. Um, we have tax holidays and so forth for manufacturers. These are all um, things that make it easier for money which could otherwise remain in the country to be put out there. So we need to have um, more confidence that we have enough resources as a country for investors to be attracted to our, um, to our jurisdiction. And not necessarily offer the multinationals that many incentives at the detriment, to the detriment of our own society, is what I want to say. All right. Now, um, we do know that the Zambia Revenue Authority has, uh, you know, been on a campaign uh, trying to encourage uh, people uh, to pay their taxes and, of course, um, these corporations uh, to pay uh, taxes. Uh, you have mentioned of a few, you know, more things that Zambia has to do, but generally you brought it down uh, you know, to ask ourselves as a people uh, to be responsible over our, you know, resources. Uh, do you think there is enough information out there uh, to the public uh, to get, uh, you know, um, in involved in, in, in this cause? I, I want to understand your question. Um, can, can you rephrase it just so I'm clear what you're asking me? I'm trying to ask, is there, is there enough information uh, to the public uh, to, you know, get involved uh, with regards, uh, you know, uh, remitting of tax. Yeah, right. Um, as I said, I do commend efforts that ZRA has made to go digital and put themselves out there. One thing we have to remember is that, um, of course, the country is vast, and also we do have deficits in as far as infrastructure is concerned. Um, across the country. So a lot more could be done to sort of um, spread the word out there, public forums, information and so forth. Not everybody can necessarily read or write or access um, access Facebook. Also remember that we have a, a large informal sector. An informal sector is, is basically untaxed. So um, there needs to be more efforts to rope in the informal sector or find ways of taxing the informal sector or getting some, some sort of revenue from them. Now, this, of course, this argument, of course, becomes very, um, for lack of a better word, controversial, because we look at issues around livelihoods and we look at um, just generally um, where we are as a country in terms of um, income per capita and how much does the average Zambian earn um, 
in a in a given day or in a, in a year, for instance. But what you have is a situation where you have a formal, a very small formal sector that is already overburdened with with taxes. It's everything from PAYE, it's um, national health insurance scheme, it's it's it's, it's NAPSA, it's toll gates, it's so there are various ways that um, your formal sector, which is already quite small, is is taxed and overburdened. So there has to be a way that the revenue authorities and the government at large can create incentives or create a, a system that ropes in the informal sector or that um, is able to trace the informal sector and find a means of taxing that um, that base as well. We have a few, uh, you know, minutes before we go, and I'll just re echo to you of yours. 0764250055 is the number to call uh, to get through. 0764250055. 0055 is the number uh, that you're calling to get through to the program and add your voice to this conversation on uh, you know closing loopholes on the tax evasion and avoidance and joining me uh, is uh, Chileshe G Mange from CTPD remember this particular program is brought to you by Tax Justice Network Africa um, we're about to get to the close of uh, our program this evening. Uh, maybe just re-echo some of the key points uh, that we should, you know, take home tonight. Hello, are you there? Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, I can get you. So I was saying we're about to wind up with the program. So I wanted to get, uh, you know, your uh, key points uh, that we should uh, take home uh, tonight. So I think the main thing that I would like to emphasize is that um, tax evasion and avoidance really, as I mentioned, are developmental issues because as long as we are not gathering the revenue that we need to gather and mobilizing resources domestically, we will not meet developmental goals. Um, the country is in a very difficult situation right now with our debt um, crisis, um, also an election year. We have seen the quota depreciate at, at absolutely alarming levels. So um, there, there is need for us to be able to harness um, as much as possible um, our domestic resources and mobilize them effectively. And as long as there are these loopholes, especially where the multinationals are concerned, we will continue to lose revenue and we will never meet our developmental goals as, as a country. I think that's the main thing that I'd like for us to take, to take home today. We also want to encourage the ZRA to continue its good work, but also look at mechanisms that can widen our tax base, um, bring in more residents. Um, we we'll, we'll encourage, we'll encourage further integration regionally and continentally to ensure that information exchange is, um, is effective um, and to hold um, home countries responsible or more liable for information um, as and when we need it as a country in order to effectively implement our tax systems. I would like to thank you for making an appearance this evening and sharing with us, um, you know, such very important information. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Good night. You've been watching uh, this special edition of the Unscripted Program uh, brought to you by the CTPD. And we've been discussing closing loopholes of, on tax evasion and avoidance. My name is Said Liz and Konjara. Until we meet again next time, pleasant viewing. From the north to the south, from the east to the west, Shonse Febi Tundu, Wonse Fiabena Zambia, it's time we stood together, one Zambia, one nation. Pamok to achieve your world with coronavirus. Tigwiri Zandi Tinkane Pancha Imos. Corona sina pwele kuchita vingazi I Corona hili bendi wefama I Corona hili bendi uh, uh, uh. I Corona hili bendi nerida Aza kontrolola no. Corona hili bendi ne teacher Corona hili bendi ne doctor Corona hili bendi ne polisi Aza kontrolola Selenge famozi ya mai Matenda tinga silize Kiserenge pamozi ya bambu, kamozi tinga kwanise Kiserenge pamozi ya mai, patenda tinga silize
Kumanja wa sakwila kumenso Maka maka mweba di mi mwadi ba isensho Mwye shaziko Chachina Nime wale meke zebo Muka lale plasi konse pena kumishi Ama funde wale sosa tu ya sungishe Tikwiri zani tinkale pancha imbozi I korona sinapwele kuchita vingazi I korona hili bendi wefama I korona hili bendi wefama Corona hili bendi nenida Anza kontolola Corona hili bendi netija 